Okay, so what you can see here, it's an assembly. So if you've done the assemblies uh, before, actually what, what you can do is like, I'm gonna make a new sheet. So to, to do the sheet, I just go here and I just say add sheet. So what that's gonna do is that if I already have my template set up in my drawing, it's just gonna add another sheet based on the same template. Mm -hmm. um, so to start like from, if I wanna start from scratch, I just need to add my uh, a simple layout, essentially by going here and adding the model view, like the, the model that I wanna show. Now I have to find the document again because I think I lost it. So let me just kind of go back here. So for example, oops, that's not it. Nope. Here. So there's the there's the assembly that I want to bring in. So automatically it brings the assembly, and you can see that it's not exploded. But the assembly basically works the same way as a part drawing. I can just simply drag it along and put in another view. So that's that's good enough. I'm just gonna keep uh, at two views, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna put them over here, just on the side. So what I want to bring though is I want to bring an exploded view. Uh, one sec. Let's see. So you see how it has a, a display state. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a, what I need to do is I actually need to create an exploded view in the assembly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Go back to my object here, whatever object that I have, and I'm gonna open it. So open the assembly, okay? So there's my assembly. Now, what I need to do is I need to see if I have any, any exploded views already. So there is an exploded view here. And to make an exploded view is very easy. Simply, I just want it, like let me unexplode it and then I'll show you how to do it. If you haven't done it before, but just for the benefit of people that may be watching this, to, to explode the view, basically you go into this menu over here, explode the view, and I can basically select any object and this little gadget appears. And with the gadget, I can sort of like move objects that I pick one at a time. So I can kind of move it, and every time I move it, it records that motion. So that's good enough for that. And then let's say that I want to move this one to the side. So then when that goes to the side, and then I want to move this one to the side. Perfect. And then I want to move the legs. And then I want to move the other leg. So what the exploded view does is that it, it maintains the relationship of the part. It doesn't actually get rid of the, the, all, the, uh, uh, all the mates. They're still there. It just simply creates this view that I can use to basically uh, 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 show the internal components how they, how they come together. Okay, so mm -hmm. here's the exploded view, and it's called exploded view two. So if I want to go back to my original view, I can just go here and go like that, and it cannot assemble this. If I want to see my exploded views under the configuration tab, the configuration manager, I just simply go here and I say explode, and then it goes back to that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've done this before, but that was kind of like part of the tutorial. It was uh, it shows you how to do this in the video tutorial. Okay. Okay. So that's very simple. And once I do that, then what I can do is essentially, when I go back to my drawing in my assembly, my exploded assembly, then I can insert another, like a project view. And here I'm going to pick the object that I want. So I want to insert that problem assembly. I, I think I need to save it for me to do the exploded view, but let's see. Yeah. Um, oh, here we go. Showing exploded state. And then here's my exploded views, right? So I can pick one or two. So let's pick two. And then as soon as I put it in there, there it is. Now, I don't need to show other views like that because all I really want is I want one exploded view. So that's good. What I'm going to do though, is I'm gonna change the angle of this. First of all, one thing I wanna do is I'm gonna change the scale of the sheet just so that it shows bigger. So let's go into mm -hmm. the properties here. And in the properties, you see that it's two, four, two to one. So I'm gonna make it four to one because that's gonna make everything bigger. 
uh, these guys I'm going to keep to do a custom scale. Instead of making them bigger, I'm going to use a smaller scale for these guys, like in the corner. So in this case, I'm going to choose custom scale of two to one so that they don't they don't take off the whole page, right? So here's my, my little drawing on the side. And then there's my, my big robot on the middle. Okay. Now, you don't have to use this view. You can actually change the view. You just need to click on the 3D drawing over here. And then that allows me to actually rotate the view around. Okay. And I can move it out like this. And I can maybe zoom in a little bit so it occupies more of the box. And then once I'm, once I'm happy with this, I'm going to save it. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, view one, two, three. Not only can I change the view, but I can also change the appearance of this box. So for instance, I can make it so that it appears to be like a solid or a solid with lines, right? So that kind of helps me kind of like uh, display different properties of this thing like that. So I kind of show different angle. Um, so that's kind of how you get started with an assembly drawing because I have both here and that's an assembly and an exploded view. Now I can actually convert this to, I, I believe if I click on the right, I can say unexplode, let me just look for it. Maybe, what is it? I need to get out of here. So I'm just going to pick the box, and then on the right, I think in here doesn't let me. Let me see if these ones do. So showing exploded state. So I think once you change the, the view, then you can't quite go back to it. But for, for instance, in this one over here on the side, I can go and say showing exploded state. So it explodes it, or I can just simply show it as the assemble state. <clears throat> now, in an, in an exploded assembly, the point of the exploded assembly is for the for whoever is doing this to kind of get an idea of how this thing goes together. And, and for it, I actually need to name the components. I need to put little labels on them. Before I can put the labels, what I need to do is I need to import what's called the, uh, uh, the, the bill of materials. So under tables in the corner here, there's something called the general table, which is kind of like a blank table. The sort of, sort of tables that, for example, if you have holes uh, in SOLIDWORKS, you can specify an axis. And if you have like 100 million holes, you can say different sizes for each hole. But what we're looking for is we're looking for BOM, the bill of materials. What the building materials does is that it inserts a table. Let me see. Build materials. So here I have some, uh, you know, basic settings. Uh, I want to only include the parts. I don't want to include any sub assemblies. Uh, display of one single item. That's fine. So all of these things going to be edited. But once I'm happy with like what the settings are here. Once I click in, then the bill of material appears. And I can edit it. So I can make it basically kind of like grow these things shorter and then put them over here. I can insert the column. Like it has some very basic stuff. For example, if I want to go here, I think that you can insert a row. Maybe not. But I can adjust the text, right? I can add a table header. Let's see if it works. Oh, he just switched it. Okay. So there's my header. Now, each of these materials, each of these things, are actually part of the. It, they refer to the different parts here. So, for example, you see that it automatically populated this table with all the items that are shown. For example, it shows the body, the head, the leg, leg two, arm, and arm two. So these are all different parts. So the last thing I need to do in this case is I need to add the little balloons that tell me which part is which. So when I click on the balloon, automatically, like what solid person do is I'm going to touch this, and the balloon is going to show me this is part number two. 
And then if I touch this, this is going to be part number one. And then every time I touch it, it'll just create a balloon with the right components. So if I have, let's say, 50 components, I can just simply touch them, and then that way the annotations will come up. And so when I do this, once I do that, um, I have an assembly drawing. That's an assembly drawing, more or less, uh, with an exploded view. You could also do other things. For example, let me just, uh, I'm going to rebuild this. Let me go back to the other sheet. So, so to go back, you need to activate. Uh, maybe not this one. Yeah, OK, we'll go this one. So for example, here, what I've done is I've taken an assembly view, and I put in a cross section, and then I put in the detail drawing. So let me just go, go back a little bit. So in essence, what you have is like here I have a basic assembly view. And I can do the same things, that, like, just like in the part drawing, uh, I can have a cross section. I can have a cross section here. Now I need to pick the right orientation. And I want to be more or less in the center. So I could just try to pick there. I think that is the center. It's snap into it. And then there's, there's this other options that allow me to do a, a section that's not a line. I can do a section that goes basically here, and then it makes a quick turn, and it goes through the leg. But I just want a straight down section. So it's going to go OK. And then it has this auto hatching. So whatever it uh, cuts through, it's going to have a hatch. But there's my section right there. And you can see that this is an assembly section, because I can see kind of like the leg behind it. But I can see how my part is cut. Not only that, I can see how it, as it, it assembles or how it joins right there. Okay. Any questions so far? Ben, are you there? No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm still here. Um, no, I'm good. Um, Let me just. Uh, I just my, my my robot is quite complicated, so I yeah. I, I don't know how many sections and stuff I'm gonna need. But well, you you don't need to show everything because we're not building it. You just need to show me examples of a couple of them. Okay. So all I care is that you can do what I'm showing you at least in one of them. Like you can show me a, an example of a section. You can show me an example of a detail. So, for example, you're right. There's a lot of like details here that I, I, you know, it would take me several drawings to get all, every every single detail. But mm -hmm. what I can do is here I can sketch. Let's sketch a circle in here. We'll make it kind of small so that we get lots of detail. And then we're gonna do a detail of that. So in the annotations or the view layout, here's my detail, right? Now, I don't want to use that scale because that's really small. So maybe I'm going to use a very much larger scale so I can see what's going on. And I can do maybe a detail of this thing over here. So I'm going to make another drawing. So I'm going to sketch this right here. And I'm going to get really close, kind of like that. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another detail of that. And I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to choose a different scale. Oh, not that. It's the other way around. There we go. So what this allows me to do by, by blowing up the, the detail, by the way, the other thing that, that I want to do is I want to make sure that these things are not too far away so I know what what belongs where. So for example, that tells you that this is section one. That tells me that that's this detail. Here's another detail. So for instance, I can show in here, if I dimension this, I can show a dimension that goes from here to here, right? It changed the way, and this is a problem that a lot of uh, students have, is like, they like to show dimensions that way. There's there's certain conventions about it, but for example, if you want to change, it, it's more about legibility than which direction it goes. To make it read easier, I'm going to change on their position. Yeah, I was wondering that because yeah. in school, I 
I took in school before, and I learned like there's there's really picky on where the the you know the numbers go, and I, I couldn't figure out how to change that in SolidWorks right. on some of the dimensions. So here, for example, here's how you change it. You put it, you change the direction, and you can have it on top. You can have it so that it's in line, or you can have it in the middle. Kind of a, okay. here the problem is that the line is sort of like it's really small. So probably the best way to do this one would be this. And then you can either put it in the middle like that. So that's a lot cleaner. It's mm -hmm. still not, not very clean because you can still kind of uh, start to see. So it's a lot easier to kind of like put it on the side like that. That's good enough. That, that clearly shows me the dimension of that. And then I can do another dimension from maybe from here to here to show me how deep this is. Right? And then I don't need to put it on the side. I can put it like that, just with a leader to the corner. So that tells me kind of like the depth of the, 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 the size of that fold. If I wanted to add that as a detail. Um, here, for example, I could add maybe I could show even closer the detail of that, and I could show how big this is how deep it goes. So it goes about um, four inches inside of the drawing, and then it goes only the depth of this thing is uh, this, this far, too. So that's important is information. There a way to, Go ahead. Is, sorry, is there a way to um, keep the dimension lines from crossing your object, or is that not really something to be worried about? That's not something, I know that... There is a way, although you see in a, in a drawing, it's more about, the problem is dimensions crossing each other. So for example, these would be not so good. That would be difficult okay. to read. But this, mm -hmm. I can, even if it crosses the drawing, it doesn't really matter because at least it tells me that it's attached to this, which is that mm -hmm. is important information. It doesn't really matter that it kind of, uh, it does matter that it does this. That's a, that's a faux pas, that's a, that's a no-no. Kind of like that, mm -hmm. put a dimension okay kind of uh, on top of the other dimension, because you want it to be as clear as possible. And the other problem too is like, students would like to put it like that, which is an unusual way of putting dimensions. Either put it in the center, or make it stand out on the side like that. Mm -hmm. See, that's a lot cleaner. Even that is better right there. That's a very clean way of, I, I don't have any issues telling what's what in that direction, mm -hmm. okay? So that's a good way of uh, sort of like adding some details here. Now, for example, let's say that you wanted to show the overall height of the bottom of the robot to the leg. Let's say that that's something that was seem important. Well, I can add, for example, here's a connection point, and here's a, another connection point. So I can use what's called, basically I can use the horizontal or vertical dimensions, or I can use what's called the ordinate dimension. Here's how this works. In the vertical form, I pick the zero point. So that's going to be my zero location. The next thing I pick is going to be my next thing. So this item is 35 millimeters from that. The next one I pick is going to be the next dimension. So by doing it this way, I'm creating kind of a, a map of how the heights of these things are affected. Now, I don't think it's going to work here because I don't have a... You see how the tangency point is not clear? Mm -hmm. I'll try it anyways. But it gives me the center, okay, the, the, the center hole. So these are ordinate dimensions, meaning that they all are or like they assume that this is the zero position. And the first one goes to 35, then 57, then 73. So that's a very clean way of, of doing a dimension map without having to do this sort of dimension, which is the uh, Sorry, where is that located again? That um, uh, ordinate dimensions? Oh, under oh there it is. I see. Yeah. So you can do very vertical or horizontal. Horizontal works the same way. Here, what I would do, for instance, I would put a center line to, to start with. So I would pick maybe the zero as my center line. Ah, it won't do it. Let's see if we can do a, if we do a sketch. We'll see if it finds the middle. No, it might need to do. Uh, well, we can do it like this. We can find the middle of, like, we can do a sketch from here to here. Oops, that's not it. Oh, here we go. I found the center of the, the object. 
So let's say that you do a sketch from here to here. Make sure that it's horizontal. And make sure that this thing is centerline for construction. And we'll see if it changes. No. I think we need to, maybe I just need to change the, uh, let me see if I can change the properties of this. Uh, or do you need that before you go into the drawing? Yeah, no, I, I, I probably just need to make it, uh, I'll just redo it, I'll reapply that. So here's, I, I'm doing the same thing using the center line. So there it is. Oh. Now it looks like a center line. The reason I do a center line is because that tells me that this is not an actual part of the product is just a middle of point where I'm going to be basing my dimensions from. So I can do an ordinate dimension here. Instead of doing it horizontal, though, I can do it, uh, sorry, instead of doing the vertically, I can do it horizontally. So if I pick this, that's going to be my zero position. Oh, sorry, no, it has to be the other way. Sorry, like that. That's my zero position. And then over here, would be my one. There's a couple of things I need to do before I use this. So let me escape this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some point. For example, a little sketch point. I'm going to add a little sketch point there. That's a tangency. I'm going to add a little sketch point here. I'm going to add this another here, another here. Uh, can't quite find the tangency there. I'm just going to guess because it's going to be somewhere there. I'm going to put one there. It's already there. But I'm going to put one there. You see, it found the tangency points for me. It automatically snapped to them. Mm -hmm. So now, when I do my ordinal dimensions, I believe that's the one. Let's see. Keep, yeah. So now, I just need to make sure that I snap to the right object. Wait, is it gonna work? Oh, no. Let's try this one. You have to set your, set your zero first. Yeah, yeah, there it is. So there's my zero, there's my first point. There's my second point. So you see, it's setting the dimensions in the oh, horizontal dimension. I, I can also do something which is in here, I'm going to put the zero kind of a, let me see if I can double click that so I can get the zero out of the location where it is. I'm going to put this symbol, which is called the center line symbol. So you see how it puts CL? Mm -hmm. That's That means that this is a center line. Uh, it's interesting. I can actually copy this. And you see how it has this dimension text? Mode CL. So I can add this to any line in here and call it a center line. Okay. But anyways, so here the idea would be that it's telling me kind of like a, a little bit of the uh, location of these, these points relative to the center line. I can also go to the other side now. I can do an ordinal dimension. But in this case, I'm going to go the other way. So there's my ordinal dimension, and now I'm going to go pick this point, this point. I could have picked this point. I think I'll it'll sneak it in somehow. Can you stretch it below the item? Yeah, there. It kind of stretches it. You see how it stretches it like that? Mm -hmm. It puts a little uh, kind of like a line. So now it's easier to read. And then now... I probably I probably should probably bring it all the way down here, or I can bring it up here. Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever makes more sense for readability. Right. Maybe if I put it over here, that that should be okay. It's a little bit unusual. Like I probably want to keep this like in line, but it makes it a little harder to read. So. 
So these these dimensions are there. They're intended. So I know that this is my zero. Uh, I want to change the location of that CL. Let me see if there's a way of doing it. Uh, there must be a way of doing so that the CL is outside. But anyways, you get the idea more or less of how how this is done. And what what I like about ordinal dimensions is that it gives you kind of like a a, a little idea of like it, it tells you a lot of information, but in a very clean way. Mm -hmm. it, it it gives you the information about like where this is located, where this is located. Now I probably need to add the I I I, I didn't I, I didn't get to add the height. The only problem with with these ordinal dimensions is that I don't think you can add it. In, you have to start from scratch. You can't just add another one. So you would need to start doing this all over again from zero and then add this point at the end. Like if you missed one, you mean? Yeah. You kind of need to start from scratch. I don't, uh, there might be a way of doing it, of, of editing this. I don't think there is, though. Okay. Uh, but you, you might search online uh, search online for a, something like a, on YouTube for ordinal dimensions, and they'll give you more details on how to do it, that sort of thing. Okay. But and, and this this is how you do like a very complicated uh, part. Now, let me just save this and let's look at a part drawing. This is a part drawing from one of the students. She needed some help in uh, dimensioning it, and she has a very complicated part. So here's the. I think this is it. No, that's not it. That's it. So let me just activate it. So here's a the part itself. It's like a really convoluted. Uh, if we open up the what it looks like, that's it, right? So there's a lot of stuff happening. There's not a single straight line. It's very very difficult to dimension because uh, there's there's all these things happening, right? So what I want to mm -hmm. focus on is I want to kind of give Whoever's drawing this will have to kind of uh, do sketches. So, for example, if I suppress this, let's suppress it. Oh, it's gone too far. Let's not suppress it. Let's just simply roll it back. So, if I drag this little thing and I roll it back, you're going to see how this is made. This is a loft. It looks like a loft. So, we roll it back. Or if we deconstruct, if we deconstruct the loft, we can see how is how it was made. So there's a sketch here. There's another sketch here. So here's a sketch in the middle. There's a sketch in the beginning, middle, and end. So you see, to make this part, I'm going to need to recreate those lofts. Plus, I need some sort of guide curve to, to tell me where this is and uh, how to how to create this guide curve. Now, if I'm making this in a drawing, what I need to do is I need to tell the person if this is going to be my guide curve for my loft, I need to dimension that guide curve, assuming that that's the guide curve itself. Mm -hmm. Oh. Something's happened here because I think something got stuck. Let me open the lab. Yeah, I suppress this. So I'm going to unsuppress it. And unsuppress this. And unsuppress that. What happens is when you suppress it in the in the part, everything else gets suppressed. It's suppressed. That's yeah, it. I noticed that. So yeah, there it is. It's back to where you should be. So I use the similar technique that I showed you, like the, the same technique of uh, using the ordinal dimensions to define these points in the sketch. Because these points will kind of tell me where these lines will get to, where I get to put these lines. So let's delete some of these. We'll start from scratch. So for instance, here's my zero position. I want to basically be able to draw 
this line, which I'm assuming is straight up, I'm gonna, uh, that's one of the rails. Here's another one of the rails, okay? Uh, this is one of the sketches. This is the other one of the sketches. This is what's really screwy about this part is that this loft has a sketch point like this on this line, and then the other sketch is on a different plane on a different direction. So you see how it's kind of twisting its way? Mm -hmm. So what I need to do is I need to, first of all, define a zero position over here. So I'm going to define that uh, vertical ordinate dimension. So I'll start here. And I'm going to define all these kind of points in between. Whether I use them or not, I can decide later. But now it says make dimension driven. That means that the driven dimension is the one that it shows in the drawing. It doesn't change the drawing. If you choose this one, whatever I type here will actually change my part and edit it. So because I'm making a drawing, I don't want to make any changes to my part. I just simply want to show the dimensions. I just keep going with uh, make dimensions driven, meaning that I, I cannot edit the part while I'm in the drawing stage. So let's see. Can you click on a dimension anytime and rechange that? I think so. Let me just, uh, I'll finish this and let's try that. So I, I believe you can. Once you go here, if you go here, you can actually overwrite it. So you can overwrite the value. And instead of saying 5.446, you can say 5.5. Right? And if you okay, do that. Okay, let's say I know you wanted to round it up. Oh, I didn't know how to do that either. I was trying to like double click on it to change the dimension because I was like 0 0.001 or something right. <laughs> in one of my drawings. And, and the problem is that your drawings are based on whatever you made. So if, you were, if your part is 5.405, you cannot dimension anything but 4.05. So to kind of like round it up, you either need to overwrite it, like I just did, or, or you simply need to change the part and make it that, that specific height. Right. So here we have information about basically the location of that center, the location of that, the location of this the location of that hole. So basically, I could sketch this line in, 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 in SOLIDWORKS. I can sketch this. If I, if I have the, lo the location and an angle, so I'm going to add the angle here. So for instance, I'm going to go and insert the angle between this and this. And it is cycle angle. There we go. So with this information, 37 degrees, and the, the height of this, I can sketch this. I have enough information for me to, I know that it's 4.13 4 high, and then at an angle of 37 degrees, uh, I can go to this point, that's 550. Now, I could just simply just give another dimension like this. In a, in a, I can add this dimension like that instead. Oops. I can add a dimension of that like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this one because I don't quite need it. Or scale them down. Yeah. yeah. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Alignment. I'm gonna break the alignment, so now it's it can go anywhere. And I'm gonna delete it. So there. Now it's a lot cleaner. I only have two two views. Now I don't like the way that this angle is intersecting this dimension, so I'm gonna kind of flip it around. Maybe I'm gonna put it right there. That's clean right there, because it's sort of. Okay. I can read the angle. Even if it's inside the part. Even if it's inside the part, that's okay because it's it's readable. It's all about readability. Mm -hmm. And I have a height, I have the length, and I have an angle. So again, I can sketch this part in SOLIDWORKS without any difficulty. My goal is to kind of like uh, sketch this arc. And for that, I need to have the location of that point, the location of this point, and the location of this point. And I'm assuming that the location of this point is going to be 
perpendicular to that. I'm guessing. I, I, I might be wrong. So let's draw a center line and see if my guess is correct. It looks like it's not. It looks like it's a slightly skewed. But that's okay. I'm going to just simply put a dimension to the center line of that. I'm going to ignore the other one. And so what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to do another set of ordinal dimensions, but on the other side. Here I'm going to put the ordinal dimensions going this way. This. That's my zero. Then my next point would be here. Now, maybe that's not the zero that I want. I want to have the zero at the same location as the other one. So let's try it. Uh, like this. So here's my zero position. Here's the inflection point. This is the point that with the curve changes. I could add a couple of other points here just for reference. For, so for instance, if I really wanted to get this line very accurately made, I could add a couple of more points along the way that will help me draw this uh, or sketch this line. So I could if I wanted to, to be very uh, precise about it, by adding that ordinal dimension and then going and select this point. Oops. From here to here. Ah, sorry. Vertical dimension. So starting here, there it is, zero. I go to this point. Then this point, then this point, then this point, and finally this point. So by doing it like this, it's giving me a map of how these dimensions, how to sketch these, these, uh, these, uh, what are curves? This spline, the, the, the curve. Because if I wanted to draw it just from the drawing, that would give me enough information. Now I probably need the, the horizontal version of this probably need to do uh, something like the horizontal version. So starting maybe from here and having this as my zero position, then I will go like this, then to this one, then to this one, then to here. And I know that this 175 is actually the same point as that one because uh, in my sketch I can uh, I can do a, I can draw a center line from here to here to show that it is the same line, right? So this ordinal method of doing stuff it gives me a, a map of how to draw this spline, which I'll need if I want to kind of uh, draw this sketch, right? If I want to draw this. Uh, like I'll, I'll need to do the same for this one now i don't i'm running out of space so i don't want to do everything but that's enough to show me or give me an idea of what uh, this looks like so that's what you want to that's what you do like basically to do a, a very complicated part you want to break it down into how do you build the basic components in solidworks in solidworks i need to know for example i need to know i would need to do a, a section cut along this axis to get that oval shape. I need to do a section cut along this axis to get that oval shape. The spline dimensions I get from this drawing and the height of this line I get from these dimensions over here, right? Now, mm -hmm. I could cross, I know that the center position of this is 480. I need to know what the center position is relative to, I already have a datum point here, so I can just simply add a dimension from here here now it doesn't matter that it's inside it just simply tells me that's just indicating how far away that center hole is from my zero position here just tells me that i'm 32 millimeters like to, to, to draw that hole i need to be 32 millimeters this way and i need to be 4.8 in height i can draw that circle and then i can add things like a radius I can add the radius of that circle to give me the final dimension that I need to draw all of that. Now, I don't quite like, uh, maybe that's better. It's inside of it. So it's clear. See? 
One last thing that I should note is that you see how these lines are nice and thick compared to mm -hmm. this one. So that's another thing for, for visibility. When you're dimensioning something, you want to make the, the lines that you're dimensioning stand out from the lines that you are, like from the, from the part itself. So to change the line thickness of this, I click on the line, and then I have a choice here of what the thickness is going to be. So I can make it either thinner, or I can make it thicker, depending on how I want to, how I want this join to show. This, the convention for this is do what looks right. There's no sort of guideline or, um, but what I like to do is, what I like to do is I like to make the things that are in the foreground, so the things that are closer to you, I like to make them thicker. The things that are further away from you, like this circle, I like to make them in a thinner line. So that way, for example, because I'm dimensioning mostly, this is the primary thing that I'm dimensioning, I'm making it very thick. Because this is kind of in the background, I'm making it thinner. And the same with here. I am taking a, 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 a detail of that. So I'm making the lines with here very thick so that they show up. And then when I put my dimension lines, they sort of stand out because they're nice and thin compared to the, compared to the thicker lines. Right? Now, mm -hmm. what's the one thing that's missing for this drawing to be complete? What I need to do is I know that like I, everything's based on this center location. I have a center location. I have an angle. I have a distance for this line, so I know that if this point is, this is the angle, and then this is the uh, this is how long it is. I could probably, uh, I, I probably need to have the angle of this line over here. That's going to be a little bit more complicated. But really, what I actually do need to draw this is I need to know the location of this. So, for instance, I can here I know that I have a center line. In here, so I could just simply draw the dimension from here to here. Ah, come on, here. I think it's. Let me try it with. Could be that that's not a line, or. Something's wrong. Let me try it with that. Maybe point to point. Well, I think I want to do is I'm going to delete this line because maybe not, it might not be a line actually. It might just be a, a leader. Ah. Well, you see, to do this dimension on, down, on this sketch, I probably need to do the same thing. I need to find the angle of this. I'm going to zoom in. That's a lot easier. Like that. The angle, there it is. So 22 degrees. And here I can put a dimension to the end of that so that I can build it. So I know that this line is 1.09 at 23 degrees. I can probably do the same for this line, except that here, to draw this line, I may want to do kind of a, a little trick, which is to draw a center line from here, just a, a horizontal line like that, and say the angle from this, I know where this point is. I just need to know the, the length of that line and the angle. So for example, I can go and say, give me the angle from here. Oops. Here, come on. Here. Let me 
build this. All right, once more. Oh, by the way, like uh, the angle here to change it, I just need to go on to the, again, back into the text position, and I just go like that, mm -hmm. and then it changes. Now, the font itself, I can change the font. I don't need to use that font. Um, I can make it smaller. So if I click, I believe it's under you wait, font. So I can make it slightly smaller. Right now it's at, uh, let's see what happens if I go eight. Yeah, so you know, now the font is smaller. So it's not, it doesn't get in the way. This one, I'm gonna make it so that I'm gonna change it. So that the text position is sort of like that, which is a little easier to read. Right? Uh, let's try doing this the other way. Let's try it. I'm gonna make a center line from here, like that. And I'm gonna try to kind of like guess the angle based on this one. It's a little bit more awkward, but let's see if it works. Go from here to here. I wonder if this is a, maybe there's a, a, something sketched on top of this. So you can use uh, center lines as uh, angle references? Well, yeah, because it, this is what's called polar dimensions. Polar dimensions in, in CAD drawing. Basically, if you give me a line and an angle, a li sorry, a distance, the distance of a line and the direction, I can build anything. In, the, in architecture, it's just a lot. So I have the coordinate okay. system. Like this one here, it's kind of floating off of another angle. So I guess you would just, you would put that center line and then do your, your angle off of it? Yeah, you could. Because you're, you're assuming that this is a, Assuming that this is a horizontal line, which which it's a convention usually in drawings that anything that's drawn straight down or or horizontally, it's perfectly horizontal. So you could try. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to kind of uh, uh, put the angle of this. There's something stopping me from. Uh, oh, maybe it's. it's uh, I think there might be a line on top of it. Just let me see if I can. No, that's not. Uh, want. Uh, maybe I, if I just go here and I pick angle, angular, one dimension, no, that's not what I want. Baseline dimension, no, that's not what I want. Hmm. Another way of cheating is that I can simply draw myself a line here. It's, I can draw a line on top of this, like that. And then I'm actually dimensioning to that line. So if I go here and I try to do dimension from here to here, now it worked. See? It's cheating in the sense that I'm not, I'm not doing it directly to the sketch, but who cares? Because it works. Case. Yeah, could you not just reference that angle from flat, kind of where your 23 degrees one is coming from? Like go like then horizontal like around. that? Yeah, like from horizontal oh, up to the angle you're trying to mention. Yeah, 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 you could do that too. You, yeah, I know what you mean. You could simply go kind of like make a line that's perpendicular like this. And then do, yeah, that. And do that. Yeah. So or or all the way like around to horizontal. Yeah. Actually, what I could do here's another trick, is that I could do the line based on the other angle from this horizontal line to this, and then you see now it's 77 degrees. Mm -hmm. That's another. That that's a little bit more uh, difficult because like uh, it'd be easier to just kind of have the polar coordinates, but either yeah. way, either way. I think the other way would be better, but uh, just for ease. Yeah. But you want to make it easier for the reader to kind of dimension this. Ah, here it is. You see these little quadrants? 
that's how you dimension mm -hmm. this. So there it is. It's just like way out of the page. So I just need to bring it down here. There. We finally did it. Mm. So there's my dimension. Now I'm going to put it inside here. And I can also do this thing, which is I can save the parameters of this dimension. So let's say that I wanted to uh, add a, a new format of dimension. So if I click here, I'm going to call it uh, part. OK. And then I'm going to make it so that this part uses the text position by default is like that. My arrows, I'm going to do them on the outside because that works. And I'm going to make my text very small. So I'm going to make my text uh, size 8 by default. OK. So all of these, I'm going to basically, it's, I'm going to save it. It's saved as a, now it's a new sort of way of dimensioning. So that okay. next, next time, next time I, go ahead. Yeah, just so everything's the same and consistent. Yeah. So next time I, I do a dimension, I can just simply, something didn't take care. Uh, let me try it again. There. So now when I do a dimension, when I do that, Instead of picking the, 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 the generic one, I can pick this one. And all my dimension will be as the, the, the whatever settings I have in this case. So here. Now, I don't think I saved the right parameter spot. I can go and change them anyways. I can go and change the text position so that it's like that. Getting a little bit messy, so maybe I'll try kind of maybe a little bit like that. I wonder if that's better. And then moving this one outside. It's getting a little bit too messy for my taste, but it's possible. Maybe I can move this over here. Like that. There we go. So again, um, I'm building this sketch one, one piece at a time. And then from here, I can build these other parts based on this sketch, the center location of that. And I can kind of like uh, I know what the position of this is. Again, I can put an angle here to draw this. I can go on and on like that. So that's, okay. how, you, and that's how you kind of do a very convoluted part. You want to have enough information to draw the complicated shapes by doing some sort of ordinal dimension map like this. You can also do, let's say, I'm going to have here I have another sheet. Let's activate this one. So here what I'm doing is I have a cross section because this is how I'm going to get my, my other parts for, my, for making a loft. So for example, here I have a loft close to where the loft uh, location is. You could try to do it right on the line. But then I get some funny results. So this one oh. is kind of so I can try. Here what I did is I drew a sketch to make this line happen. What I do is you draw a sketch on the part like this. Then you make it parallel. So you pick a point here on the on this, and you add a parallel relation. So here's my sketch. Here's the line that I want to make it parallel to. Right there. You see how my, here's my relations. So I want to make sure it's mm -hmm. parallel. So no matter where I move it, it'll, it'll always be parallel. And then I can put it anywhere I want to, to make my cut. If I pick it over here, if I put it right there, and then I pick the layout, it's going to make a section right there. Right? And then I'll put it anywhere I want to. I need to break the section. So, or, I need to, let me see if there's a way of making it so that it, uh, it goes in a different direction. So you need that center line. If you want it on a specific axis like that, you would need that center line before you do your section, so it knows yes. where to section? Correct. Okay. Because otherwise what happens is that you, you, you only have one choice, which is horizontal or vertical. Okay. You can also, I mean, section lines are funny because you can actually use any sketch you want and then as a, as a, as a cut. So I can use a spline as a section cut. So I can do a spline like this. 
I don't, I don't know exactly what application this would be useful in, but, but you can do it. <laughs> um, so I can use that, and I, I think it will do it. Let's see. No. So I think it has to be no. something that's... Well, I, I believe you can do an arc. Oh, okay. An arc might be able to do it. Let's, let's try it out. Because an arc has a ge geometric relationship. A spline doesn't have any geometric relationships. Let's see. I think uh, maybe. No, it has to be straight lines. But okay. um, here's the other way of making a section. Just you don't have to use this, but here's how you you know you should know this is that I can do a section like that. Then this thing comes on. So I can do an offset section. So for instance, I can pick a second point. Here's my first point. Here's my second point. So it creates a section that starts at M, at the top M, and then it finishes at the bottom M. It makes no sense if I do it uh, vertically. Here's another way of doing the same thing. I could sketch a line. Let's say you start at here. You go this way. And then you decide to go straight down like that. So if I pick this sketch and I go, it does that. It's a weird cross section, but it it it, it works. It yeah. kind of a yeah. I can see in certain applications it could be helpful. But. Yeah, it, it it's not the best application for this drawing because it's a so such a rounded shape. But let's say that you're making a you try to make a boss that intersects with another boss that intersects with a hole then you want to make a cross section along multiple levels. So you can see, then you can sort of like you know, measure the whole size at each size, at each location, and then you don't have to do 10 sections. It's all kind of captured in one section. Right. Again, like I said, this does not have a good application here, but that's just to show you. Okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it at that then. Like, uh, do you have any more other questions? No, I just want, yeah, actually, I do have one question just related to my robot assembly. Um, do you suggest that even though I don't see them in my robot, that I use, like, ball joints just to connect everything, or can I just do flat surfaces against flat surfaces? You can do something? flat. Flat surfaces are better because the problem with ball joints is that, uh, I mean, you could do a ball joint. Uh, the, the, the difficulty with ball joints is that you have to have concentric views. The centers of the spheres have to be in the same point. Okay. Because otherwise, let's say that you have a big sphere and a small sphere. In reality, you're joining the the centers won't match because they are. Uh, it's kind of like this. Let me just draw it on you on the page. But if you have no, a, sure. you have a it's sphere big. like that, and then you have another sphere that's smaller. Uh, yeah. So eventually, essentially, uh. So if you did do ball joints, just make sure that the outer and the inner are the same diameter, sort of thing. Kind of. You can also, yeah, you can you can basically uh, there is a setting, a setting that allows you to to link surfaces with spheres, and I think there's a choice mm -hmm. that you can say you can, you can choose to do center to center or surface to surface. Okay. Uh, I I believe there's a choice in the in the options of the mate. It's just hidden inside somewhere. But ideally, what you can do is, yeah, you would pick center to center, even though they're different sizes. Maybe what you can do is you can make them so that one of them is slightly, just slightly less bigger, smaller than the other one, mm -hmm. and make the center locations. In reality, in the real world, they'll make like this. They won't be set concentric, but they'll be close enough. Right. Cool. And um, detail for our robot, like it's it's for tomorrow. It's either the cup or it's the uh, the robot, like arm, leg, torso. Correct. Yes. So what I want you to have is essentially this robot over here, like uh, the you you don't have to have the head yet. You can have 
the, the three components. Now, let's say that you're, you're not quite finished uh, one of them. Let's say that your body's still in a, in a process of building, even what you have. Yeah, it's the torso that I'm working on right now. I've got everything else, but. Right. So, so that for the torso, if it's not complete, that's okay. Like just give me whatever, you, whatever stage you have. Okay. Uh, you may not need to add more details, but uh, oops, I don't want to. Uh, I want to activate this. So, for instance, here the full torso is finished. So, if you have a general volume and it hasn't been, you haven't uh, made it, that's okay. It's not a big deal. Okay, cool. Uh, what you're going to show me, though, is you're going to show me the torso, one of the arms, one of the legs. Um, you need to make a, a mirror image of the leg. You, you can't right. just, you can't mirror in the assembly because it all depends on how you mirror it. You need to actually mirror the part itself and, and save it as a different part. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, or you can insert it into the assembly and, and mirror it there, can't you? You can, but the problem like is that you, you can, but then the new leg will be dependent on whatever you mirror. The mirror plane will be the definition of that. Okay. So you won't be able to move it unless your mirror plane is right to the middle of the robot. Uh, so, so what I recommend to do is make yourself a, basically make a mirror in the part itself, delete the original body or suppress it, and save the second leg as a new, with a new name. As a new name, okay. That works. And that way, when you bring in the, the assembly, you bring in leg one and then leg two and they're mirror of each other already. Okay. Good. Great. Well, well thank you very much for uh, for that. It was very informative. I can't believe I'm the only one here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, what I do is I've been recording, I recorded this session, so I'm gonna post it online. So if you need to go back, and you can have a look at it. Okay, cool. Great. Okay, so we'll, well see you on Friday. Sounds good. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye.